Okay, it looks like we're up and running live here in Dubai. Very good evening, everyone. Hope you're doing well and I hope you're having a super mega large day. If we've got any visitors from the Middle East, Assalamu uh, alaikum, mahaba. Good to have you with us too. So here we go. Um, Dolby Atmos sound design mixing part two. Uh, the last one I did was, I think, two months ago, and we kind of got to the end. I spent a long time doing the template and all that stuff. And I kind of felt that, you know, we need to go into just a little bit more detail in the actual mix side. So I've got a small um, sound design project here that uh, some of you will have seen before. Uh, let's just make sure. Yep, there we are. It's all ready to go. And uh, we're going to go through that. I'm going to do a mix, show you a couple of tips and tricks. I've also got a couple of questions from people, which is always nice, especially when they come before we start. So I get a chance to pre-prepare a little bit. So I've got two or three questions um, that I'm going to answer right at the beginning and then another two or three uh, when we get to the end. All right. So let's um, first of all pull up the DAW. By the way, if you... Um, Let's just get the camera there. Yeah, if you, uh, if you are listening, of course, make sure you've got headphones on. Some of that will be quite important a little bit later on. Right, camera off. And yeah, so first thing, just like to quickly talk a little bit about HRTF. Um, I'm not going to go into this in huge detail because there's lots of information around this all over the place, but People have asked, what is HRTF? So I pulled a little bit of info out and I've got a couple of pictures that I'll slap up here for you to see as well while we're at it. So HRTF stands for Head Related Transfer Function, also known as Anatomical Transfer Function, ATF. All right. Um, it's a response that characterizes how an ear receives a sound from a point in space. So as a sound strikes the listener, the size and shape of the head, ears, ear canal, density of the head, size and shape of the nasal and oral cavities all transform the sound and affect how it's perceived, boosting some frequencies and attenuating others. Um, there's actual information all over the place um, about which frequencies tend to be attenuated and boosted and so on and so forth. But it's quite a clever technology. Um, which basically means that you can kind of get the impression that, you know, things are moving around you and that you're, you know, doing things in a certain space just with your two ears. It's like we all listen to stuff, right? So um, I've always said this, you know, with the hem headphone emulation applications that some of us use is the, the big thing apart from the frequency responses of the headphones and trying to keep them flat a big thing has always been this thing of well there's more to it than just having a signal put into both ears one at a time so you're not hearing the ambience from around the room and also how do you how do you make things sound like they're coming behind you when you've got headphones on when there's literally just two channels, you know. So this is at where HRTF comes in. Um, another quick question was about binaural. So it's all kind of rolled into the same thing. Binaural recording is a method of recording sound that uses two microphones arranged with the intent to create a 3D stereo sound sensation for the listener of actually being in the room with the performers or instruments. And of course, playing it back will give you the impression of actually being there. So it's all, you know, around the same thing. The first, the first experience I ever had with this, I don't know if any of you guys will go back this far, but was uh, two of my favorite um, musicians and producers, Lol Krem and Kevin Godley from 10CC, uh, released this album called Consequences. It was a triple album, there lots of music on it. And one of the things was, one of the pieces of music was a thing called the burial scene. And it showed them in the little booklet, it showed them recording this burial scene where they shoveled soil onto a coffin, which was basically you. And they recorded that with a head with two microphones on it. So it's not, it's not like it's new, um, new technology, really. That was 1977. 
consequences. So, and when you listen to it, you kind of really did get that impression that you were in this coffin getting buried before the music came in, which was quite, uh, yeah, quite disturbing, but also really powerful. So then we've got Immerse, which is the, the technology that um, Steinberg are involved with um, from Embody. And thanks to the position and shape of our ears, our brain can locate sounds in all directions, but everyone's ears are different. And so the sound is kind of uniquely altered on the way, you know, from the outer ear to your eardrum. And once again, this is the HRTF in action. So with the Immerse technology, which you can actually insert into Nuendo, and I'll try and show that later on, although it won't make a great deal of sense uh, because it's individual to each person. So what you do is you take a picture of your ear and you send it up to them and they do their magic with the, you know, the, the molding or the, uh, how could I say it, the, the different sort of shapes of, of your ear and your inner ear. And you submit that to them and then you get a response back, which you then, you know, plug into your ambi decoder, which you, again, I'll show you that a little bit later on. So it's one of those where, you know, the thing with the, with the um, Immerse thing is that I've got mine set up for my ear, so it wouldn't necessarily sound particularly good for you. All right, so like I said, there's a few more things um, we'll, we'll talk about afterwards. Um, but what we're going to do now is we'll move straight into the mix. Um, so it's time to put the headphones on. And uh, let's go for it. Yeah, okay. The headphones comfortable. Um, here I've got this, this project that you've seen on the screen in the background there. This was a sound design project that was done in stereo. It was done for a demo actually quite a while ago. So it was difficult to find stuff to do because um, any of the official work that we've done, as you guys I'm sure will be aware, um, we can't... Um, we can't use it on YouTube because it would get blocked. So what I've done is I found a lovely little video from Pexels. It's nice and short. And, and it shows this guy getting on his bike and cycling away. And uh, we did the little demo of that. Um, and we just did it in stereo. So what I'm going to do today is try and quickly, without too much messing around, show you how to move this into Atmos. So I've stripped all the mix. So if we if we play um, if we play this, let me just get rid of the camera. If we play this, you'll just basically hear all the elements as they were originally when I first put them together. We can get rid of the mixer, and let's just move this down here for now. And uh, I will attempt to zoom in so that you can uh, see things a little bit more clearly. So here's the elements. So it doesn't actually sound too bad as it is, I guess. Um, but obviously, those of you that are listening carefully with the headphones on, you'll be able to hear that there's a few elements that need sorting out. Um, so I guess there's no need to really go into the detail of how these things were laid out, because we have done that before. It's, you know, it's just a case of, I mean, the, the, the lovely feature of Nuendo, as I'm sure you know, is this uh, ability to follow the video where the cursor is, uh, which doesn't exist in Cubase. So as you can see, um, I can move the cursor, the video follows. But not only that, if I have a particular sound, let's say um, this little bit here, I'm only going to do this. Uh, once, because like I said, this is not really about how to put it together, but more about how to do the mix. So let's just see that little clip there where he puts his foot on. So if I wanted to get that totally synced up with the video, the nice thing is I can grab the part. Let's zoom in. And you can see this part here. I can literally move that to where I think his foot is just hitting that pedal. 
Now, the thing with this is how much of it will be perfectly in sync uh, for you guys, um, because there may be a little bit of a, a delay between the picture and the, and the sound on, on the live stream, but hopefully it's clear enough. So you can literally, you know, move things around to super, super fine detail. Okay, so anyway, we're not, we're not talking about putting the things together today. We're going to move this into Atmos. So I think one of the things that's quite important here is the, um, let's get rid of the video for a second, is the labeling of the elements. Now, this is okay with, uh, you know, a, a sound design project that's only got a very small amount of elements like this. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus a bit of music and a voiceover, which was just really for part of the demo. But I think, you know, when you, when you start getting onto projects that have one to 200 tracks, then naming of things becomes really useful um, because you can then categorize. Um, and the other side of this, which we'll get to again, once we go into the Atmos uh, side, let's bring the video back up, is, can I quickly zoom? Yeah, we've basically got, although I've got all these different tracks here, we've got a number of elements that are kind of tied together. So, for instance, the sound of the bike, the tires, the wheels, and any little scrapes that are coming from the bike um, can all be put together into a group. And of course, the same goes with the actual human, the sound of his footsteps, the sound of his cloth movement, which we did a couple of little cloth things here, you know, and the sound of his uh, little bag rattling around. Um, all those things can be put together because we can and want them to move in the same place. Right, anyway. Okay, so that's, that's the background of the project. It's the guy getting on his bike and riding away. And we have a stereo project at the moment. A couple of the tracks are actually stereo, doesn't matter. And what we're going to do now is convert this into an Atmos project so that we can mix it. We're going to mix it very quickly and very simply and show you how the process works. So with the advent of Nuendo 12, we now have a very nice, simple way to get started um, with the Atmos thing. Um, I showed you this once before, but we go up to project, we go to the ADM authoring for Atmos. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just move that into a nice central place. We'll hide the video again for the moment. And there's the ADM authoring for Atmos tool. Once again, I always say this and I always forget it myself, but I'm going to say it again. When you're dealing with this, don't close it afterwards. OK, I know it's very it's like a muscle memory thing. You go to the X button but either try to just minimize so it goes down to the taskbar in Windows or whatever your equivalent is in the Mac, or, um, or set up a, a key command uh, because you'll be coming back to it quite a lot. That's the simple reason. So if you close it, then you have to keep going back up to the menu again. <laughs> and you'll probably see me close it loads of times while we're doing this, but there we go. That's, that's the uh, IQ drop that comes from streaming live. Right. So now we have a very simple way to get set up and we use a setup assistant. Um, we've got to make sure, as you know, that we're at 512 samples and that we are at 48K. We've got a green light there, as you can see, which is wonderful. Um, and then we're going to set up the renderer, which will be 7.14 for Atmos. And we're going to add a main mix channel with the renderer. We'll add a bed group, but we're not going to route all the tracks to the bed. Um, some people, you might want to be using different configurations of bed, but we'll keep it to the standard, which is 7.12. It's basically 10 channels. And we'll leave the main 
renderer at 7.14 although as you can see there are other options so we don't want to route, route everything to the bed channel um, but we will make a bed and we'll hit OK and there we have it as you can see I just push that over a little bit oh, in fact now let's bring it into the center for a second so that I can zoom in with my little tools so you can see there that we've got our bed here 7.12 and there it is standard bed we've got if I bring up the mixer, we've got the standard bed here and we've got the renderer and it has already been solo defeated. I actually always like to solo defeat the bed as well. So I'm going to rename that just bed one. And as you can see, I've got everything quite nicely organized here. So that's stage one. So we're now in Dolby Atmos mode, which means, of course, that we won't hear anything. Because none of the channels that are already in existence are rooted to the renderer in any way, and none of them are rooted to the bed. So the next step would be to start creating some objects in the ADM tool. Um, and this would allow us, uh, let's bring the render a backup again yeah this would allow us to start panning things around in basically 3d okay but we're not going to do that just yet this is one of the little things that i thought would be kind of useful to to go through when we're working in this kind of scenario so i was saying earlier on okay so we've got a human and we've got a bike those are the two elements in this video apart from obviously the things that are floating around which there isn't really much the two elements are the bloke himself and the bike himself so i've been quite careful when i named these because I want to make sure i know later on yes this is the human and this is the bike so there's three channels here and then we've got the ambience, which we'll get to later. So if that human is going to move, obviously his footsteps and his um, clothes and any little noises that he makes are going to move pretty much in the same place. So if we're talking about a project which has 200 tracks, this can save you a lot of issues because you may have noticed, and this is something we're going to talk about at the end, that there is a limit to the number of objects you can have with Dolby Atmos. This isn't, um, th this isn't a restriction of Nuendo, by the way. This is you know, the, the whole Atmos system. That's, that's how it is. So if you can group things together, it also will help you not only help you with the the moving of the of the items around the the field but also it will save you with the objects uh, there are other ways to get around that anyway we'll talk about that one at the end so okay so let's just what i would do here what i would do here is i would go to the bike and i'd say okay those are the three elements of the bike and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click and I'm going to add group to selected channels and we'll call it bike and we'll leave the output as renderer and we'll put it inside a folder. In fact, let's call it all bike and let's make it capital letters. And there it is there. We'll move that in a minute so it makes a bit more sense. And as you can see, the, those three elements there have now been rooted to that group, which is being sent to the renderer, but you still can't hear it because we haven't created any objects or sent it to the bed. So I'm going to quickly just do the same thing with the human. We're going to select those three channels. I'm doing that incidentally by holding down control. If you add others, you know, you can select that way. So once again, lovely little... Um, 
feature is this this right click and add group to selected channels or if you want to set up key command and this is all human all human so we've now got those two groups. Let's make the colors similar to, um, to what I made them originally. The bike was kind of a gray and the human was a kind of a purpley color. And then what I'm going to do now is because they're groups, I'm going to move them slightly so that we can see um, everything nice and clearly. So we've got all bike, all human. We've got the bed. We actually haven't got the um, renderer showing where it should at the moment. Is that because the mixer is a little bit... Ah, there. Yeah, it is, it is there. It's just... It's just... Uh, it was off the, off the side of the screen. So I just want to double check that this mixer is the right size so that the zoom works. And so there we've got it. We've got the bed, we've got the bike, we've got the human. And if I press play now, you still won't hear anything. But you can see, hopefully, on the mixer there, that all the human stuff is going to the human group and all the bike stuff is going to the bike group. And uh, in fact, what I'd like to do is just move those around a little bit like this so that they kind of make a bit more sense. Bed, let's make that now capital. Right, all right, so we've done our little groups. So now what I'm going to do is create my first object, which is our human. So I've selected the channel. We're gonna go back to the ADM authoring tool, which I remembered not to close, so I don't have to go to the menu. And we're going to Create an object from selected track. And there it is. So all human is now a group. The binaural side, well, once again, we'll maybe touch on this on a, on a different video. Um, but for the moment, let's just, just leave that as, as it is. We'll call it effects. And we should hopefully now be able to see, unless I've done something wrong, we should be able to see that we've got all human, we've got an object panner now, the, the full multi-panner, and it should also be audible to us. There he is. So you can hear everything that the human did. And we'll get to the panning and playing around in a minute. That's the interesting part. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the bike group. So we go there. We bring back. And I did close it. <laughs> what was I saying? So we bring that back again. And again, as you probably know, but just in case you're new to this, there are two ways to do this. We can leave that track selected and do it like I just did. Um, or we can add an object and do it manually. I'm going to just do it like this. Although this doesn't work with VST instruments uh, use at the moment. I'm sure that'll be sorted soon. So once again, create objects from selected track. And there we have it. Once again, we'll call that effects. And... Hopefully, you should now be able to hear the bike as well. Right, still sounds terrible, and, you know, there it is. Uh, one thing you may have noticed, incidentally, we've got the uh, panner there. Yep. One thing you may have noticed if you were looking down at the groups here on the mixer, is that you can't actually see any action, right? So what we can do there is, uh, this is gonna go off the bottom of your uh, screen, but what we can do there is change the setting to post fader. And now,
you'll be able to see. So we've still got a couple of other items before we start going into the mix. And the mix, really, I'm sure you guys will be, once again, I know I say this a lot, but I'm sure you guys will be very aware of this, is that the mix <laughs> is like the icing on the cake, isn't it? And like most of the actual work and the job revolves around doing what we're doing now, putting things together, working out what's going to be, how, all right, I've got 200 tracks and I've only got 128 objects in Atmos. How am I going to, you know, sum them together? And it's all that calculation and figuring things out that actually make the end bit, the mix, is kind of the, you know, it's like the, the light at the end of the tunnel. And, and this is what I always say um, when it comes to actually doing the sound design as well, is set yourself a, a light at the end of the tunnel. Start with the boring part, the footsteps. Start with the footsteps, because you know, how, I mean, you can spend hours doing footsteps. Once you get into the swing of it, it's all right. Um, and, and, you know, move progressively towards the more interesting stuff. Make sure you stay organized. And then the mix becomes the little icing on the cake. Right, we've still got three little pieces that uh, we haven't dealt with yet. We've got the ambience, uh, the music and the voiceover. Uh, I don't know if we'll get as far as the music and voiceover today, but it's not super important. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I could have brought in a like a 5.1 or even a 7.14 ambience file. Uh, there are a few around, especially if you're using Soundly, etc. Uh, but I'll stick to what it is for now, because at least we get the point across. So there's our ambience. Now, before we can make a group with this, we'll just make sure it's rooted to the renderer. Once again, I've forgotten to minimize. So there's our ambience track selected. Let's go back up and what we're going to do once again, create an object, the ambience and uh, we'll still call that effects. Let's set that to far on the binaural side. Minimize the window. And we should now be able to, yep, we've got the ambience in an object and we should be able to hear, hear that as well. Although we're not seeing any panning. And this is why, once again, you know, I should probably have sent this to a group to be honest. And finally, um, yeah, come on, it'll only take us a second. What we're going to do here is with the music, I'm going to route that to our bed. Don't forget, you can route anything you want to the bed. You just have slightly less control over them, that's all. And then finally, set the renderer as the root and then the VO channel we're going to once again make that into another object and we'll call that narration let's put that near okay right so we're nearly ready to actually go with the mix let's just make sure we can hear him to lose the win, well, yeah, but mute anyway. All right, so we're pretty much ready to actually dive into the mix now, which should actually be quite simple. Uh, first thing we're going to do is just quickly check that everything is coming up as it should be. And you'll notice that the groups here are, um, yeah. 11 channels for each group. So yeah, I should have pointed this out really earlier on um, that uh, the group doesn't so much save you channels. I don't know if I said this earlier on, if I may, maybe my usual IQ drop from uh, broadcasting live. Um, it doesn't really save you channels, but imagine if you had 20 elements to that instead of just three or four, then um, you know using a group with objects can be really useful. So you can see we've got the human group, we've got the bike group, 
And then here we have the ambience, which is a stereo pair of objects. And then the voice, which is single. If I play those. You'll see that everything is still in the left and right domain. Let's put the music as well. It's no easy feat to finish a 24 hour race. Nothing's been, nothing has been mixed yet. So, you know, that's the next step. So once again, we still don't need to look at the video, but what we're going to do now is just quickly get these individual levels so that they sound decent. So I'm going to just listen to our human first. So let's have a listen to his footsteps and so on. Don't want the cloth to be too overpowering, do we? So that's that. Now let's have a listen to the bike. Yeah, actually not bad to be to be honest, all just summed as it was. A couple of little noises that we can bring those down a bit. And of course you could you could also do some individual EQ. Maybe we will just pull off a little bit of bottom end there. Actually we'll do it this way. Yeah, let's just pull that down. Maybe 40. Have a listen to that. All right. So those are the three individual levels of the bike which are going into the all bike group, right? So what we want is those to sound kind of realistic. And the ambience we'll get to at the end. So what I'm going to do now is go into the actual mix of the two individual elements that we've now got, which is the um, human and the bike. So for this, we need to see the video. So let's put the video up into the center there. Uh, hopefully you can see that. I'll try to zoom in. And we're going to start with the human. So let's bring up the, ah, yeah, this is the problem we have, of course. I don't think there's any way to, no, there isn't. So, all right, forget that. We're going to put this over to the side. Let's do it this way. And I'll try and zoom in again. There we go, something like that. So don't forget, this is the group here. This is the group. And this obviously is the video. So, it's no easy feat to finish a 24 hour. What we're going to do now is listen to him on his own. We can keep that always on top and that should help us. So here he comes. And off he goes. So first thing I like to do with the multi-panner is make sure I've got a preset saved with everything where it is. Uh, and I do have that already. Um, so it, you can see here I've got object center. So if I load that, it basically resets everything back to, to the default. So if I accidentally mess things up, I can just go load preset and pull it back. So because this is basically a single channel. What we ought to have done actually is just made a stereo, stereo groups rather than rather than uh, full multi groups. But hey, we're there now. We're live. We can't go back. But as this is a stereo um, kind of stereo or a single point image, what I'm going to do is just pull everything in. So if you imagine that he is. That's, that's our little guy there. That's him, that little piece there. And if we play that, you can hear that I'm 
moving his sound around the field and also of course you can move it up and down so what we need to do now is follow his movements um this won't be quite so important with some tv and so on but certainly with movies the, a lot of the time you know following movements is is quite important so don't be this is up and down here but don't be um put off by or no what's the word don't be misled by the fact that he's moving towards the top of the screen because he's not moving up into the ceiling so for example you know, it'd be tempting to go, okay, that's the up and down. We don't really want him to move off up into the ceiling like that. What he's doing is moving from kind of there to the centre of the picture. So, it's, you know, all he's doing is that, basically. So here we go. So what we're going to do, we've had a little mess around. We'll, we'll place him where we kind of want him. He's going to come in over here, he's going to move across, and then he's going to go off up into the distance there. So we, we'll start with the front, uh, the, you know, the, the forward and backwards movement, and then we'll just tweak this, um, we'll tweak the up and down movement a little bit. So he's going to come in around about here. So automation on, get ready to catch to catch him. And although there wasn't any actual sound from him, good. And then we'll just do the, we'll just tweak the up and down area a little bit so that just so it moves a little bit up into the center of the picture. So here he goes. Okay, that could have been better, but as we're, as we're live. So you get the idea there, I think. Nice and easy to automate. There's his, his, it's quite freaky seeing these little block of objects. I should have really done this in a stereo, but any, anyway, it's done now. What, what is done is done. So let's have a quick look at the renderer. And you'll see all those objects now. You'll see them moving. And as they move upwards in the field, you'll see them get slightly larger, which is super neat. Right, render her away. Back to the video. Let's do the bike. So the bike, uh, we need the bike channel. So we'll solo that. We'll um, bring up the panner. And once again, because the bike, and I, because I stupidly put these into full, you know, 7.04 objects we will reduce him down reduce the bike down to a little block of objects there how's that and um, the bike itself is going to start around about here so automation on and all we're going to do is follow the bike up into the distance so let's go all right and then we'll do a little bit of the height into the center of the picture okay and finally while we're at it What we need here is to fade the bike out. So I've got the fader, I've still got automation on. Mm. Perhaps we'll just do that one again.
okay and it just snaps back up to the beginning there not a problem because we can just have a look at the main screen and make sure that that doesn't happen that's just there look there's a little bit of volume where it's snapped back up to the top right so let's have a listen to both of those with the video That's pretty convincing. Um, even even though I did make a little bit of a mess of the uh, groups and objects thing. So um, now we have the ambience, which is the one thing that always kind of um, you know sets sets things off. Really, you know, obviously you have to be careful. But what it does is it basically just brings everything together. So I'm not going to actually automate this uh, um, at this point, but what I'm going to do is just put it up to the, the kind of back end area a little because I feel like some of that noise should be coming from this area, this open area here. And of course, with the up and down movement, oh, I'll just put that kind of dead in the center. We won't worry about the other things as the object size and so on and so forth for now, because we are running out of time as usual. So let's have a listen to the ambience and just blend that in. Yeah, okay. So I guess what would be nice there if you really wanted to go into detail, and I don't mind doing this because this is where things, you know, really start to become quite fun. Um, what would be nice would be to get a, another kind of ambient sound. Maybe you can hear there's a little car there in the distance and actually put it as though it's coming from this area here. So the main ambience is spread all around, but then there's a, you know, there may be a car going past outside. Um, we're pretty much there, to be honest. Um, the other little thing that I thought you may find interesting here, let's just close, uh, temporarily just close the uh, video, was uh, we have the music and, and, a, and a voiceover, which neither of them were meant for this particular project. Let's maybe knock the, the voice off, but leave the music there. And uh, let's have a, a look at the finished item. Maybe I can make this full screen. So the only other thing we could do if, 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 if this was a, a project that was going off somewhere, you may want to actually add some ambience to the individual sounds, you know, like a, the sound of a, a kind of an outdoor ambience. When I'm saying ambience, I don't mean an ambient voila kind of sound. I mean like a reverb, you know, an outdoor reverb. Uh, but we're, we're out of time for that. And there's still a couple of things I want to show you. So first of all, let's bring up the renderer because you'll see, first of all, how interesting it is. In fact, we can get rid of the panners now and we can put the renderer over here. And you can see, you'll see how interesting it is to watch this all move around. On top of that, keep your eye on the levels here. So you can see that I've not quite got human and bike moving together. That would be another thing that would be relatively easy to do would be to just copy the automation curve from one to the other. And maybe we should have done that this time. Um, but you can see we've got a lovely readout of the levels here, uh, which is extremely useful, um, giving you all the information of you know, how your levels are. 
Um, aside from that, there's one other thing. Um, we've been listening in, in, in to this in a 7.14 down mix. Now, with New Endo 12, we can actually listen and down mix to bi binaural. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think I think those human steps are a little bit loud, actually. But other than that, could you tell the difference there with your headphones on? And this ties back to what we were talking about earlier on, the HRTF and the binaural thing and so on. I can actually hear... Yeah, so I think we're about there. There's just the couple of questions that I wanted to to uh, address bef before we before we say bye bye. Um, so somebody asked, um, let me uh, the limits. So we've already covered that. What are the limits to the number of tracks? Um, and the limits, as we've said earlier, well, 128 objects i suppose so you've usually got your bed which would be 10 of those and that leaves you 118 objects stereo count as two so how do you get around that if you've got a project with 200 and something tracks well send a bunch of them to a bed or do like i've done here which is would be to send them you know group them in uh, things that are in the same area and send them to a group and that way, you, yes, you, in the way I've done it, uh, it's still using quite a lot of track, track uh, ob, of objects for each group. But uh, still, if you had 200 tracks, you could probably put things similar. Uh, but you could mix them into a bed as well, which would be... Um, the other question, how many speakers are involved in Dolby Atmos? Um, so, yeah, the answer to that is... Whatever. How long is a piece of string? Um, the technology adapts the object audio to take full advantage of the number of speakers and the placement, uh, you know, in the individual system. So you can get great results from systems with five speakers, if there's a couple up above, or even a sound bar, you know, a, a single sound bar with a, something above, uh, right up to a full Dolby Atmos setup with, with 24 speakers and 10 overhead and so on. Um, and the final question, which I'm just going to turn off my camera, uh, somebody said, how do I render the binaural? Now, obviously, we talked earlier on about the full 7.14 comes out as an ADM file with all the associated data so that uh, all the automation and everything is all sent so that it is compatible with all these, you know, varying size systems. Um, however, if it's a binaural file, like we're, we are listening, we're monitoring now in, in binaural, right? So how do I render that? So that it's just a stereo binaural file, so I can send it to you. Um, and my answer to that is, okay, you know, there's probably other ways to do this. Maybe it's something I haven't really thought that carefully about it, I've got to be honest, but... My simple answer to that would be to just send to the main outs from the renderer channel. So we'll turn that on. You might have to increase the level a bit. Let's have a... And don't forget, we're not, we're not hearing the main outputs at the moment because they're not actually rooted to anything. So we're not, it's not like we're going to hear that, you know, the level. So we've done a send from the renderer to the main outputs that I've got here, or, you know, to whatever you want, basically. And all I'm going to do is press my little key, which would be K, and I'm just going to render that as a stereo file. And that would be the binaural result. Now, there may be a better or recommended way to do that but that's the way that I would do it. So, okay, let's go back to camera. So there we go. Um, I'm down to my last little drop of water. Cheers, everyone.
Um, that was fun. There was a few mistakes made, I've got to be honest. Um, but hopefully uh, you've got the gist. And uh, as I always say, if there was even just one thing that uh, you didn't that didn't occur to you before or that you've learned from this, then, you know, I'm, I'm a happy man. Um, I look forward to seeing you next month um, for this, for the live stream. We're going to have a look at the Project Logical Editor, so that'll be good. A um, little bit technical, but it should be quite fun. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Thanks ever so much for being with us. Thanks for the comments. And once again, thanks to Terry for the moderation. Feel free after we finish to uh, jot anything down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them all as usual. All right, all the best guys, super mega large. And thanks for being with us.